So here's like this final result. So the blue box reminder is a yellow B11, and then the purple box is a rough debtor. And as you can see, kind of by this crack, it seems to fit tighter and just seems to be a little more precise. I'm Peter Robuchot. I'm a machine learning engineer at Roboflow, and I'm one of the creators of RF Debtor. I am Isaac Robinson. I'm also a machine learning engineer at Roboflow, and I'm also one of the creators of RF Debtor. Very excited to talk to you about it. Hey, I'm Matt Paul. I'm also a machine learning engineer at Roboflow. Yeah, and I've been responsible for rolling RF Debtor out on the platform. So happy to talk about it today. Yeah, so um, RF Debtor is our new object detection model architecture that we've been working on and rolling out lately. The goal of RF Debtor was to build an object detector that transfers well to user data. Let's talk a little bit more about what we needed to do to get that done. So RF Debtor is a state-of-the-art object detection model. It's real-time and transformer-based. So this means that it's designed for a wide variety of domains and for data sets that are both big and small. It has top benchmarks on real-world data, and it outperforms other object detection models when tested on RF100VL. So we'll talk a little bit more about what RF100VL is, but it's a benchmark that we released alongside this model to see how well data set your model performs on downstream data sets. And it's built for the edge and for the cloud. So for the speed, for our fastest model, we have RF Debtor B, which stands for RF Debtor Base. And then we also have like sort of a cloud sized model, RF Debtor Large, which is 128 million parameters and, and lower FPS than the base, but more accurate. All right, so how should we benchmark new vision models like this one? So historically, Coco was a data set that people often use to benchmark object detectors. It has 163,000 images, last updated in 2017. It stands for common objects in context, and it contains examples like humans, dogs, TV screens, and common objects like that. RF100VL is based on 100 open source data sets. And it represents a much broader domain of real world applications from things like cell counting to industrial defect detection and many more uncommon use cases that wouldn't be found in Coco. So on Coco, we have this chart here showing RF debtor in relation to other state of the art models. So you can see here the yellow series at a comparable speed, the RF debtor has like three year points map higher and you can scale up the runtime of the model by switching to the large at 560, which is the native resolution of the model. And it gets something like 59 map. And then by scaling up the size of the, the resolution of the large, we can run at 25 FPS on a T4 and break the 60 map barrier on Coco. And for the new benchmark R100VL, we get the best scores by a large margin, which was the goal of this project. And again, so RF100VL is a hundred different data sets. So if we transfer our base weights to your data set, we think that RF100VL or RF debtor will be the best model for that use case. So now let's take a look at how it works in the real world. Awesome. So basically now RF debtor is fully integrated into RoboFlow and you can train and inferences, inference it just as any other model. So here, for example, we have this data set that basically helps us detect cracks in, in the floor. Um, so basically this little defect detection example, and we're going to compare how training different models on it looks like, but first I'll just show the flow on how to train a model. So we have a version and then we can just like usual train and we'll have this new option, RF debtor, which we're going to select here and, um, basically going to continue. So far we have base size here which is our better base. Large will be added very, very soon. And so we'll just click continue. We have an option to trade it from the public checkpoint or train it from a previous run. Here we'll just start from public checkpoint and we'll just go ahead and kick off a training run. So that launches training, uh, which we can monitor later. But so here I already have a pre-trained or better and a pre-trained yellow V11, just so I can kind of give an explanation and comparison into how trainings for these models can be different and how you should view it. So right out of the box, we can see that our data gets a higher map. As you can see here, we're currently rolling out precision and recall metrics as well for you to look at. Um, but basically if we look at the training graphs of our data, 
and training class of yellow, we could notice a difference. As you can see here, the other gets to this value that is really not that far below its final map within the first 10 epochs. And uh, we observe that it is a nice property of it where it really tends to converge way faster than other models that we have on a platform. So although sometimes it takes more times per epoch, it does converge faster. So as a user, it sometimes makes sense to monitor. We have this button here called stop training early. So if you want to be cautious of your resources, but also just want to like achieve optimal time versus performance, you should monitor that graph and likely you will find that kind of breaking point where it is useful. On a country with YOLOS, they kind of don't really have that obvious point. As you can see here, it keeps improving all, all the way out to 300 epochs. And uh, it is, uh, but they do go faster through their epochs. But we do find that you can achieve better performance faster with RF data. And we would recommend people to try it out on our platform and see how that goes for themselves. So yeah, this is kind of the comparison of how training those models work. And so now we can jump into just kind of this like inference comparison here. So the way we will do it is we will look at our protocol workflows. It basically allows you to do inference on your models with a bunch of other helpful tools and things. So usually the way you would create a workflow here, there's like a bunch of preset up combinations. You can, for example, detect, count and visualize, detect and classify. And if you press one of those buttons, it'll create a workflow for you with your model auto populated there already, the one that you trained here. Um, I have a pre-built workflow here just for the sake of example, so we don't have to wait too much. Um, so basically, let's just kind of go through it step by step. We have this input here. So you can think of workflows as like this flow chart. Your data gets inputted and then goes down like that until it gets processed by models, some things happen to it, and then it gets outputted. So this specifically takes our input image, which is our data set with a bunch of cracks. And uh, here we want to compare our updater that we trained versus yellow B11 that we trained. And uh, we just want to kind of see the difference between their detections. How does it look actually? The goal here is to kind of go beyond map and actually visualize. So we just basically have those two models, RF data block that we trained for the model, and then yellow B11 block that we trained for the model. You can set a bunch of things like confidence, classes you want to filter, IU threshold. We're keeping it simple here, just once again for comparison. So next up, we have this model comparison visualization, which is specifically a block designed to compare the predictions of the two models. So as you can see here, it will be taking the predictions of our RF data model and our YOLO V11 model. And uh, it's going to be basically just comparing the two and showing us the example. And then lastly, we just have these two blocks for bounding boxes visualization. So one would visualize the bounding box for the detection of RF data or detections of RF data. And it will be in purple. And then we will have bounding box visualizing detections of yellow V11, which would be in blue. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and try it out. And then, yeah, of course, it'll just get outputted and we get to see all of the raw outputs as well as the visualizations. So let's give it a shot. So we just have a bunch of preloaded images here. We can start with this one. So basically, if we just click run, we are going to run our updated inference here. So it's kind of running those step by step. We got two detections, get our boxes graphed. And here's kind of like this final result. So the blue one, the blue box reminder is a yellow V11. And then the purple box is a yellow, is our updated. And as you can see, kind of by this crack, it seems to fit tighter around the, the crack, which kind of corresponds with our map and just seems to be a little more precise in a way that it detects those. So let's just run, just throw a few more examples to visualize it for ourselves. Here, once again, we can see the better precise fit around the crack. There is not as much empty space left and we cover more of the actual thing we care about. So. You can imagine, once again here, it's way more precise in locating it in the frame. And you can imagine as an industrial manufacturer, for example, that knowing a more direct location of your defect could be very important. You can measure the size of it, uh, which can 
just be more accurate and lead to better savings and optimization. So this is just like one of those examples where selecting a better model could help. And we believe that our app data could be very helpful. Here actually just our app data detected the crack, which once again, enables you to be more precise and accurate. So yeah, this is the comparison of the two models and that's kind of where I finished the demo. And you know what? I want to mention that we're still rolling out a bunch of things and some things are not in their final shape. So please don't hesitate to reach out if anything goes wrong, post any support questions on our forum, and we'll be there to help you with those. Thank you, Matt Vate, for talking about what it is to build a model on platform. Here's a very clear example of how easy it is to use the new RF Fitter model in your production workloads. Here, we use RoboFlow's inference package to load a model that we've trained on the platform. Here we load a YOLO model, and right below we load an RF debtor model from the same workspace trained on the same platform, and the RF debtor gets the higher score. And to infer, you just call infer. That's it. So I'm going to talk a bit about why we're able to get better performance. Free training helps. So in a lot of other subfields of machine learning, including large language models, image classifiers, we see that telling model giving a model a lot of knowledge about the world beforehand is very important for being able to perform new tasks, especially new tasks that have only a small amount of training data. Here we see that the debtor variation, debtor-based models, including Define and LW debtor, RT debtor, all have significant bumps in performance uh, when you pre-train on Object 365, which is a large pre-training data set for object detection. But the YOLOs, do not show such a meaningful bump. So pre-training is shown to be very important for debtors, seems to be less important for YOLOs. And the reason is here. So as Matt Vey mentioned in his conversation, the RF debtor model converges significantly faster. And we see that a YOLO takes a very long time to converge. Early in training, it does show a benefit from having done the pre-train of something like plus five math. But as we proceed, the gap becomes smaller and smaller, and only at, by the end of the training has it actually achieved by map on the data set, period. The fact that the RF debtor converges faster means that it doesn't have to forget as much during this long training run and is able to maintain the memory that we put in it for the pre-training. So the big key that we had over other debtor-based models is better free training. So we actually work with Facebook's Dino V2 backbone, and it has enough model knowledge to do this type of thing out of the box. We're getting this very precise segmentation of a dog. This model has not actually been explicitly trained to identify something like a dog before. It's very clean and coherent across the video. Um, by having that type of knowledge in the first place for a large number of different types of data, we're able to out of the box perform much better on types of, on, on, in, as a general object detector with much less data. So additionally, that was the, that was a major contribution of our work. We also, debtor models don't require NMS. We lean into that and we observe that the model actually has an interesting property where between video frames, you have much smoother predictions, and we have more precise understanding of overlapped objects. Um, the, the, between video frames, we actually didn't notice ourselves. Someone from the public had run it and said that this looks uh, like butter, which is a very nice moment for us. We replaced the batch normalization layer with a layer normalization. Uh, that's very, very important for training on cheaper hardware because batch normalization requires the entire batch of data that you're doing your stochastic gradient descent on to be in memory at the same time. But a layer normalization does not have that constraint, meaning that you can train with lower batch sizes and therefore on hardware that has less memory and therefore cheaper hardware. So we think that's very important for using these models in the real world. And finally, we actually train with a multi-resolution training objective where we resize your images on the fly during training 
which actually also asks Azure as our primary data augmentation step. And that has the very interesting effect of allowing us to, after training the model, trade off latency for your accuracy by just running at a higher or lower resolution. We also made this work with Apache 2 license. We made it an open source GitHub release that already has 1.8 thousand stars and people are using it and having a lot of, we're having a lot of fun seeing people's reactions. So people did, this person did a head to head comparison with RF Dutter versus Yolo V11. You can see the training curve here, this significantly faster convergence that we've talked about, but also significantly higher score overall. Um, here's a, an example of this kind of buttery movement that people have talked about, although it's not perfectly fair comparison because they're also using a byte track on top of it. And here they, uh, for agriculture case, talking about meaningfully better results with the RF debtor. So thank you. If you enjoyed this type of content, please like, and subscribe for more.